Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business. Welcome back to the channel today. We are here to provide you with all sorts of excellent information about QuickBooks Point of Sale. If you didn't know that, then hang on to your caboose because we're gonna get into it and you're gonna learn something, darn it. <laughs> all right, in QuickBooks Point of Sale today, we are going to talk about the actual behind the scenes effects of saving a receiving voucher. A little backstory here. What is a receiving voucher? That is the document that we save and we use it to um, bring your products into inventory. It populates the quantities. It's what happens when your, your products show up on your doorstep and you want to put them on your shelf. Well, you got to get them into your inventory system first. And to do that, you use a receiving voucher. And that is, it's, it's how you receive stuff. You receive it into your point of sale. We're going to talk about the behind the scenes effects, each and every little thing that happens when you save a receiving voucher. And before we do that, I'm going to tell you to click on the link down below in the description so you can get over to our QuickBooks point of sale Facebook group, which is an excellent community where you can ask questions about errors or workflows or anything else you want to know about QuickBooks point of sale. People such as myself and other uh, community members We'll join in the dialogue and we'll, we'll get you answered and we'll make sure that you are satisfied with your answers. Um, well, maybe not satisfied. It depends. Some people are never satisfied. <laughs> so uh, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to click on the subscribe button down below so you can get all the latest and greatest QuickBooks point of sale videos coming at you all the time from our channel. Okay, so uh, if you haven't done a receiving voucher yet, then just know that this is how you want to receive your inventory into your uh, inventory system so that you can then sell stuff out of your inventory system. Make sense? So I'm gonna add a few things here. We're actually not gonna be able to see this behind the scenes stuff. Uh, I'm just kind of putting this in front of us so that we can have uh, a nice little, I don't know, visual aid, I guess. Now, if I was ordering from random vendor, which is a very interesting company name. And I was then receiving three Exploding Kittens board games as well as two beeswax candles. And then I hit save so that those would be populated into our inventory. Here are all the things that happen behind the scenes. And I just wanted to let you in on this. So as I just said, it's gonna add the quantities into inventory and then you should know that it's going to recalculate the received items average unit cost in inventory if the voucher cost is different than your previous order costs. So uh, let me just say that again. If you ordered these at a slightly different price than you've received or ordered them from in the past, so if these, uh, the cost of these from your vendor is now different than it has previously been, then it is going to recalculate the average unit cost in inventory. Yes, point of sale uses average costing. No, it does not use FIFO or LIFO uh, costing, which means that your inventory valuation is calculated from an average unit cost times your quantity. If that was way over your head, then maybe you're new to retail, then uh, just hang on. You can come back to this later. You'll understand it someday. But just know that uh, changing the cost here, because you you know you obviously need the cost that you paid your vendor this time for it. Uh, if it's different than the past, then it's going to recalculate your average unit cost. Now, it's also going to, if, if you have new costs, it's going to update the item's order cost in inventory. And so the next time you go to order this on a purchase order, these are the costs that are going to show up because it, it's just kind of trying to help you. You know, hopefully your vendor costs don't change all the time, but you want the most recent info, so that's going to update your order costs. Now, it's also going to update item prices. If the item price was formerly zero and you're just receiving it for the first time, 
and it's going to base that upon your defined margin or markup on any price level uh, or price level markdown specified in company preferences. So if you have your department set up automatically with margin or markup numbers and your price was at zero and now you're receiving this for the first time, it's going to calculate with this cost what the price should be of this item because it was not previously set. Now, next, it will update margin and markup and prices if you manually updated them from the voucher. If the cost has changed and the inventory price was not formerly zero. So, uh, if, if you already had a price on your item and now you're having a different cost, along with changing your uh, average unit cost, that's obviously going to change what your actual margin or markup statistics are. So it's gonna update that statistic just so you can see that you have a new margin because uh, the discrepancy between cost and price has changed. Ooh, this is really, this is a really beefy subject here. Um, uh, sorry, sorry it's so complicated, but this is the stuff that happens behind the scenes and most people don't like to think about this stuff or even know about it because it's so nitty gritty. But we're going through it today. Some people out there probably want to know. Alright, along with all of that stuff, when you save a receiving voucher, it will update the received item's last received date. If you didn't know, you can go on any item and you can look and see when it was last received. This, this uh, date will be updated because you are now receiving it. Um, it's obviously going to add this voucher to your receiving history and the item history and vendors history. So uh, your receiving history will get the voucher in its history. The item that has a readout of its history will list the voucher there. And then the vendor itself will have this voucher in its history. So three different places this voucher will show up in history of different, uh, different portions of the point of sale. <clears throat> it will also update any reference PO and it will um, fill in the status of item received. Uh, so what that means is if you're receiving from a purchase order, it's going to either close that purchase order because you received everything or it's just going to update the purchase order with what has been received from that purchase order if you haven't received the whole thing, right? Uh, it's going to print a copy of the voucher if you actually hit save and print. And then for QuickBooks Desktop Financial, it's going to either send over a received ticket expense uh, or my recommendation, if you leave the checkbox unchecked in billing info, if you leave this unchecked and enter an invoice number, it's going to create an open bill in QuickBooks Accounting, which is super useful. All right, that was a lot of nitty gritty, meaty stuff. If this was at all helpful to you, go ahead and hit the like button down below. I love to see those likes. Otherwise, leave a comment if you got a question about any of those operations that happen behind the scenes. My name's Peter with BlackRock Business. You have yourself an excellent day. All right, bye-bye.